I'm here today speaking with Hanshi Stephen Kaufman, world-renowned author, educator, and distinguished martial arts grandmaster. With over 50 years' experience in his chosen discipline, Hanshi Kaufman has accomplished a tremendous amount of understanding for the way things in the world can be and ought to be made readily accessible to each and everyone who concerns themselves with personal development, business excellence, and living with joy and freedom. A hanchi is the highest rank attainable in the martial arts. It's a title of honor. Essentially, you don't decide to be a hanchi, like so many people are doing nowadays. A hanchi comes with tremendous responsibility. First of all, there are basic requirements. You have to be 35 years or more in the art, however you define the art. You have to be over 50 years of age, which means you have some sort of sensibility. And you have to do something relevant to the arts themselves. Not, not opening a school and turning out black belts. Not, uh, you know, going around breaking boards and things like that. You have to do something essentially vital that's going to develop the art itself. For example, what I did, uh, my uh, particular version of Musashi's Book of Five Rings is definitive interpretation, definitive interpretations of Sun Tzu's Art of War, this gives me the credibility to maintain myself as a hanchi, which essentially in medieval times was like a five-star general, a Supreme Court judge, and the local bad guy don't mess around. Mm -hmm. I got involved with, the, uh, with karate when I was in the Air Force in Okinawa in the 50s. I had no idea what it was except that, hey, this is good to know. You get into a fight in a bar, you know some karate, you're in good shape. I had some idea of the martial arts because of when I was a kid, the guys coming back from World War II would teach all the uh, punks on the block. I wasn't. I got a little jujitsu on how to handle themselves. I figured it was a good thing to know, you know, kick, punch, you know, break a board, impress women, you know, this kind of a thing. As I developed it and as I stayed with it, I said, whoa, wait a minute, man, this really got nothing to do with, like, fighting. So, yeah, Ru is a school, Do is a way, so a heavy Do is the way of the snake, heavy Ru is the school of the snake. Okay. It's considered one of the most formidable methods of martial arts training because I don't teach martial arts. I teach martialism, which is a whole different mentality. I don't teach Karate 101. I train warriors. And coming along with that is personal excellence that I demand from you as a student. I demand excellence for myself, which means I constantly practice and seek to know more and more and more instead of just like lining them up outside, signing them up on contracts. So it's a way of life. I don't want to just give you a black belt and say, hey, you're a black belt. You have to be a black belt, not wear a black belt. And that's a whole different approach to it. And everybody talks this story and very, very few people understand it because they don't devote their lives to it. If I took advantage of my commercial success with my books, I would be a very, very rich man. All right? I'm not looking for that. Because I understand things from a whole different perspective. All right? At the same time, I'm not going to take a vow of poverty. So I'm going to do what I have to do to escalate the art form itself to the next level of its evolution. And that's incumbent upon me to do that. And if you want to study with me, then I pass it to you. And you know at the jump that it is your responsibility once I acknowledge you and you acknowledge yourself to take it to the next level. You know, you have to like find out what are your real motives. And then again, the responsibility of the sensei because it's not a, shall we say, a, a thing that like everybody should do martial arts, everybody should do karate. It is not for everybody. Yeah, self-defense is okay, that's cool, all right? To develop yourself as an individual to a high level of consciousness, is not for the weak-minded, all right? And I really put my foot down when it comes to that. What is it that you believe it was so important about your particular interpretation of Musashi's Book of Rings that is giving you this well That's success? a very good question, all right? And I'll answer it very straight ahead. The reason my version of Musashi's Book of Five Rings is world-recognized as the definitive interpretation is because it's straight ahead, it's based on life experience, it's based on contemporary practicing techniques, developing the art, and talking to you straight ahead. What do you want? What do you want? You want to use this, you want to use that, where you want? You want to be a butcher? You want to be a candlestick maker? Doesn't matter. A lot of people confuse the Book of Five Rings with being a uh, business manual. 
which the Japanese had used. You're going to study uh, business in a big corporation. You're going to read Musashi's book of Five Rings. Man. No, it's a very straight ahead book that tells you, you want this? This is how you get it. If you don't do this, you're not going to get it. What is difficult to understand here? And because it's so straight ahead, it just keeps selling and selling and selling. Because once a book starts becoming a tome, okay, a real thing, the author is not really focused and is not really in line with what the subject matter is. See, so I always tell students, I say, hey, what do you want? Tell me in 25 words or less. Same thing when I was a kid, you took a box top off a box of cereal. Tell us in 25 words or less why you want to ride through the Southwest with the Lone Ranger, you know, kind of. A, well, I want to, no, no, no. So, boom, everything is very direct and short. And a lot of people have difficulty with that because they cannot come to terms with the tragedy of their own inconsequence. Self-revealization acceptance is something that was actually revealed to me, all right? And I was always, look, studying the... Uh, spiritual things, the religious things, and I kept going over and over and over. They're telling me to get from here to get to heaven, you got to do this, that, and the other thing. Okay, I'll buy it. But you're not telling me how. Self-revealization, SRA, is the actual mechanism that puts you in touch with what I call the spirit of the thing itself. The spirit of the thing itself is so named according to your desire. And this gets very, very intense at this point because you are responsible for you. And you have to learn to let go of certain things, okay? The same thing like with positive thinking. Well, yeah, positive thinking. You could be thinking a negative thought positively, all right? You know, like one of these, fa you know, fantasies of what goes around comes around, you know, sometimes, all right? Uh, affirmations, you're affirming a truth based on someone else's information for you. SRA, self-reveal, self, self-revealization self acceptance is you accept yourself as the divine entity and you live your life in joy and freedom. If you're not going to do that, you're living it for me, you're living it for him, you're living it for her. And so you have to learn to define your own universe and come to terms with the fact that here we go you are the center of the universe how do I know that because I am the center of the universe and without me the universe does not exist without you the universe does not exist so this gets very very heavy all right but it's very simple it's very straight ahead and when you look at it you say uh, oh really so why do they make it so difficult because they don't want you to know all right so I've spent my entire life developing to this point, and obviously I'm past 35, so I kind of have a handle on where things are at in reality, you know? The other thing is, I took the teachings of Musashi's Book of Five Rings and Sun Tzu's Art of War with my own commentary and created, I say I created, although the information was pumped through me, through the creative aspect of the universe to do this, okay? You don't invent anything. You accept things because everything's been done already. There's nothing new happening. You heard the expression, there's nothing new under the sun. That's a truism, okay? Taking the teachings of Musashi's Book of Five Rings and taking the teachings of Sun Tzu's Art of War with my own commentary, I came out with Sword in the Boardroom. And the basic, simple lesson, you win. That's the whole idea to do anything, but you must do it for the benefit of all concerned. If you don't, somebody's going to feel screwed and they're going to figure out a way to get you. This is not like this win-win nonsense, which doesn't work. That, that, that's, a, that's a Madison Avenue nonsense thing, okay? How can two people win a situation? It doesn't work. Who's in charge? Somebody's got to start the situation. Yeah, it looks good on paper, okay? But you talk to the heavies, okay? I'm talking about the big business guys. No, you win. Yeah, you, yeah, no, you know what? You did win. Good for you. Get it done. Yeah, right. Okay, you know, this kind of a thing. So somebody's got to be in charge. So winning for the benefit of all concerned is something that should be vitally approached by all of the governments, all of the major corporations. Somebody is working for me. There's not enough that I can do to enhance that person's life. And that's a purely selfish thing because the more I do for you, guess what you're going to do? Whatever you can do to make me happy. Is that correct? Because the more you do, I give you more. Boom, boom, boom. And it just keeps going and going and growing. And that's what the creative aspect of the universe is. It's not competition. It's creativity. 
Okay, so when I set up my seminars with corporations, first thing is I do is I go in the same way I'm talking to you. Hey, let's go have a beer. Let's go find out who, what, where, when, and why. All right? What do you want? You want to get your company to the next level? You're having particular issues? Let's find out why not your company, but you are having the issues. Oh, whoa, well, no, well, it's them, it's them. They don't do their job. No, 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 no. no. It's management, man. It's from the top down. It's not from the bottom up. You know, like uh, certain elected officials seem to think it's supposed mm -hmm. to go that way, all right? It doesn't work that way. So I'll structure my seminar for your particular needs. And I know what has to be done. You know what has to be done, but you can't get it going for whatever particular reason, so you call me in. I'm not a motivational speaker. I don't go in there and say, hey, boys and girls, save up your money, and if you really do your job and save your commissions, you can have a Cadillac. What? What do you get? What? what? Do you need a Cadillac? That's not the issue, okay? The point is, you do everything you can do to make you look good. And that's a purely selfish thing. Because the more you do to make you look good, you can make me look good. I'm not a fool. You're taking care of me. There's not enough I can do for you. And the same thing goes in a personal relationship. Okay, that's why everybody's running around. He won't do this. She won't do that. How about the both of you do the same thing? You know? And get rid of your egos by appreciating your ego and not giving your ego a false concept. Again, very few people can come to terms with the tragedy of their own inconsequence, and very few people can come to get together with the uh, attitude of the tragedy of their own um, insignificance. Whoa, yeah, you bet. What makes you think that you're the queen of the world? Me. What makes me think that I'm the king of the world? Me. And the same thing has to go back and forth, okay? And that wasn't the mistake in words. It is me. It's all me. And because it's all me, I have no problem acknowledging you. Bada bing. That's a Brooklyn thing. Bada bing. <laughs> okay. All right. So the same thing like when I'm doing karate. I don't have to break 32 boards. But I have to know what's involved with doing that so that I can put myself into there and develop my techniques. So the martial mentality covers every aspect of living. The whole thing you have to understand is everybody talks about yin and yang, yin and yang, good and bad, evil, right. But there is no such thing as yin and yang. I'm telling you, and I know I'm a master. Okay? How do I know? Because I know. There is no such thing as yin and yang, which is not to suggest that yin and yang do not exist. Big difference.